When I mention AI software, artificial intelligence, what's the first thing that pops to your mind? Probably all of those scary sci-fi movies you saw of different things, robots and whatnot, taking over the world. But today I'm here to share with you guys how AI software could actually help you in your homeschool. We're going to specifically be looking at the program ChatGPT, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys five different things that you can use that will totally transform the way you do homeschool lessons and how this important tool can help you in your homeschool. So let's get started. So first, let's talk about what is ChatGPT. Like I said, it's an AI software that is totally free and it's kind of in the testing phase right now. I'm sure it's going to grow and change as we go throughout the years, but right now it is a totally free website that you are able to utilize in your homeschool. And one of the first things that you can do with this is actually to help you create lesson plans. Now this could be lesson plans that you use in your home or lesson plans that you use in your homeschool. For instance, I asked ChatGPT to give me a sample lesson plan of World War II, and this is what it gave me. It's incredible the amount of detail that it went into. It gave me materials that I'm going to need to gather. It told me what kind of warm-up activities I can do with my students. It gave me direct instructions on what to do and how to actually teach the lesson. It gave me activities that I could have my students do to work on that information, things like working together to make a timeline of World War II, and gave them opportunities for independent practice slash homework that you could assign to your child for further study. It even gives you assessment ideas of how you can make sure that they've learned the material, questions to ask, making sure you kind of hit the bullet points. So then I asked the software, what are some hands-on activities? Because we're homeschoolers, we like hands-on activities. What kind of hands-on activities could I incorporate into this kind of lesson? And it gave me additional ideas as well that you can see here. This is really absolutely incredible. Each time you go into the software, you start a new chat and it is AI software. So it learns as you go. You don't have to keep repeating the same questions. It knew when I asked for hands-on activities for this lesson that it was talking about World War II. So it kept that in mind. You do, if you're going to like a totally different topic, want to start a new chat because otherwise it'll start incorporating information from previously in the chat. But this is one big way that you can be using this in your homeschool. The next thing that you can use it for is in your literature studies. So I was able to go in and ask the chat to please give me some, some discussion questions that I can ask around the book Charlotte's Web. You can also ask it for book summaries or ask for potential writing topics from a specific book. And you can even put age parameters around it. So you can say good discussion questions to have my second grader answer about reading Charlotte's Web. Speaking of asking about specific ages, I found a really cool feature where you can actually ask the software to help you explain a difficult topic and then you can give it an age. So for instance, I asked it to give me a simple summary of the US government for a 10 year old. And this is what it gave me. It went into what is the three branches of the government and what are some easy explanations to explain this to a 10 year old. After it gave me its great explanation for a 10 year old, I could have asked it more questions. I could have said, can you expound a little bit more? Or can you give me more information? And it would have continued going. Or I could have asked for what are some great learning hands-on activities for how I could incorporate this into our lessons. But instead, I asked it the question, okay, how would you explain this same information, but for a three-year-old? And this is what it came up with. The United States is a big country with lots of people living in it. We have a special group of people called the government who help make sure everyone is safe and what they need and have what they need. The government is like a big puzzle with different pieces. One piece is called the legislative branch and they make the rules for the country. Another piece is called the executive branch and they help make sure the rules are followed. The last piece is called the judicial branch and they help decide what happens when people don't follow the rules. All these pieces work together to make the country run smoothly. That's a pretty good explanation. And I just think this could be really, really neat as we're explaining things to our kids. If they're having trouble, we could possibly use this. The fourth area that I see it being helpful in our homeschool is being able to ask specific questions. Like one question I hear a lot is, well, what does my seventh grader need to know? Now it's up to us, we are the homeschool parent, but sometimes we like to have a general idea of what do typical seventh graders learn? And then we can decide if that's something that fits with our philosophy or not. So I asked that question. And within that, I was able to ask, okay, so what kind of specific science concepts would a seventh grader cover? They showed some examples of what you might cover in a science curriculum for seventh grade, but they explained that really what's most important is that they have these specific skills, that they should be de developing scientific skills such as observing, hypothesizing, experimenting, and analyzing data. So I asked, 
how can I teach analyzing data? And it gave me a five point idea of ways that I could incorporate this into our school. Now, the fifth way I think this could be useful is doing specific research on a topic. And so with this, for example, I asked the software to give me more information about the, the history of the printing press. Of course, again, it gave me five to six points about the printing press, but then I was able to ask, where can I find out more information about this topic? And it gave me specific websites. It gave me um, a museum that apparently has a lot more information and pictures of the first printing press. So as you can see, there are quite a few useful things. And again, the sky's kind of the limit when it comes to topics or questions that you could ask the software. So I've shown you a few of the benefits. I've shown you a few of the things you could do to help you in your homeschool, but are there things that we should be considering? Yes, there are for sure things we should be considering and be careful about. And one of those things being that any kind of software or program, it's only as good as information being put into it, which means that there is going to be times that you get inaccurate information. So you are never going to want to base all life decisions on this. You're going to want to fact check things, especially depending on what purposes you're using it for. But if you are looking to brainstorm topics, for you to teach on or get general ideas of activities or information, this really can be a helpful tool. We also have to understand that there probably are going to be some biases in the program and obvious limitations. We would never want to become dependent on this where we were incapable of making our own lesson plans or doing our own activities. Obviously this is a new technology and there's a lot about it that we don't fully know. And because of that, I will not be allowing my kids to have any access to this information or to this website at this time. It will be purely a teacher tool that I use in my toolbox because I do think this does open up a lot of opportunity for shortcuts, for cheating, um, for a lot of things with our kids where they could end up not learning the information um, that they need to be learning. And so I don't want to provide that temptation or that downfall for them at all. And I would caution you in that area as well. However, I think for a parent with discernment, with wisdom and with caution, we can go into this utilizing this tool in our homeschool for now. So I'd love to know, do you have any plans to use AI in the future in your homeschool or is it something that you're going to steer clear of from now on? Let me know down in the comments. If you're looking for other ways to improve your homeschool, be sure to check out this video of 10 different habits that can transform your homeschool in 2023. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.